Good morning. Once again, we're here on this Sunday morning to worship the Lord and to share with you a message that we believe the Holy Spirit has given us to share with the body of Christ and others as well. Thank you for joining us today. We love God and we love you, and we're continuing to pray for you and ask for your prayers as well. I want to say before we start that um, lots of people, not lots, but a number of people have been calling in asking when are we going to restart worship here at the, lo at the local church, when are we going to open up again, and so forth. So I wanted to take a couple of minutes and kind of explain to you what's happening here. I don't know, recently I was in the newspaper, uh, sort of a, a semi-large church that's within the region. They opened up again and they went back to regular worship and they didn't wear masks, they didn't adhere to COVID guidelines, and now they have a number of complaints and charges filed against them. And uh, they uh, you know, will probably potentially have fines associated with them. So we're not calling names and we're not feeling like uh, we're gloating over someone else's misfortune. We just want to pray for that church because we know how it is to be caught up in situations where you have to follow government guidelines and yet those things don't work, it seems, in the favor of the church. But my point is, is that, very quickly, I'm just trying to say that we don't want to rush and do things out of the timing of God and rush and do things that's not within the will of God. We want to make sure that we have collective wisdom and collective prayer and guidance and uh, just be able to know for sure the next step and when God wants us to take it. We want to be sure that uh, we are ready and set up when we do come back here uh, very soon, that you are safe, that people adhere to guidelines and are willing to be obedient to follow us in those guidelines. We, we just want you to be safe. We want God to be honored and God to be glorified. Besides that, church is just not gathering together. Uh, it's so much that can be done while we are online, while we are not gathered. I mean, it's so much outreach, so many blessings that could come that way. And that's part of the reason I believe God is allowing us to go through this time like they were in Acts chapter 8. The Bible saying upon the persecution of the church that they were scattered everywhere preaching the word. So I believe God is permitting us to go through this attack in order to push us out into the world and into the harvest to reap the end time harvest. So we're, we're asking you to continue to pray that, God would, uh, that we would follow God's guidance and that we would know when we're in the timing of God. By the way, I'll be preaching on the timing of God uh, very soon here in this series on praying in the will of God. The other thing is that uh, I just want to quickly say, and then we'll get to the word, is that uh, I and, and my wife and I went and we got our vaccination and everything, and uh, it, there was no hurt, no pain, or anything like that. We didn't experience any side effects and so forth on the first one. So uh, we want to encourage you to get vaccinated, and uh, we want people to get well and uh, that God would be glorified. Okay, we, let's move today uh, into the Word of God. Let me just uh, kind of get back refocused here, and uh, I'm asking you to bow your heads and pray with me now. Father, how wonderful it is to gather, uh, not in the local body, but Lord, all over uh, the region, all over the cities in the Pacific Northwest, even viewers across the world, we thank you that the body of Christ uh, can gather together, Heavenly Father. We thank you for your care and your protection. We thank you for being God. You are amazing, you are wonderful, majestic. So many words we can use to describe our experience with you. Now, Lord, as we go into this word that we believe you've given us, 
We ask in Jesus' name that you would touch people with your power. Open our ears so we can hear, our emotions so we can feel, and then help us to not just be hearers of the word, but doers as well. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to ask that you get your Bibles and be reminded each Sunday, each Wednesday night, we have a Bible teaching, virtual Bible teaching. Sunday mornings, we have our virtual worship, and we're asking you to bring your Bibles, but also call others and ask them to join us. All right, uh, today we're going to sort of go real deep or a little deeper uh, into some things, and they may be a little complicated in some areas through here, but if you keep me going and Keep us focused with your amens in your comment section or however the Spirit of God may touch you. Uh, or if that word says something to you, then let us know and let others know uh, and chime in with us. Uh, and we pray that you would do that. This morning, we want, you know, we started uh, a series of sermons last time on praying in the will of God. Praying in the will of God. Now, um, I know that uh, for some people, uh, they may feel like uh, they don't need teaching or preaching in this area. Uh, they hear a lot about that. Uh, everybody talks about praying and how they are praying. Uh, well, to a certain extent, that may be true. But I've learned even now, uh, as many years as I've been in ministry and so forth, there are depths that God is taking me there are revelations that God has revealed to me, even about things that seem simple. So prayer and teaching about prayer is very, very important. Going deeper, dealing with issues that are deeper, and you'll see that as we go along through this series. So I don't want to take up a lot of time to try to tell you where I'm going, but we'll be dealing with some very, very uh, challenging but yet helpful issues. Uh, how do you pray uh, for a spouse? How do you know that spouse is for you? How do you pray for a relationship? How do you pray as to whether you'll take a move and go to another portion of the country? How do you know you're in the will of God? How do you pray about uh, a career? Uh, how do you pray about a job or employment situation? How do you know that you're praying in the will of God? It's very, very important to, to be able to understand those and many other kinds of things. You know, how do we pray for our enemies? The Bible say pray for your enemies. How do you pray when one spouse is unsaved and another one is? How do you relate to them from day to day? So those are things and many others that are practical, that we deal with from day to day, that as we go through the next few months, and we may have to adjust for some of the holidays, but we'll be in this series, and we're asking you to stay with us, okay? The title of our sermon today is Praying in the Will of God, part two. And we did part one, part two. So last time I preached several Sundays ago, uh, Pastor Gabriel and I share from time to time and rotate. We're not always sure when, uh, but uh, we do rotate and share. So I'm asking you to keep up with your notes and so forth and really write down things and keep up with them so you can study them again. All right? Last time we started a sermon series on praying in the will of God. Praying in the will of God. And the subtitle was the prayer that God always answers yes. The prayer that God always answers yes. And we want to continue that today. But our main focus is the importance and the value of praying in the will of God. If we want to get God's yes answers to our prayers, we must learn to pray in the will of God. The prayer that you prayed today, if you prayed, the prayer that you prayed, was it in the will of God? 
Are you expecting God to answer you yes? We must learn to pray in the will of God. But how can we know and be for sure we are praying in the will of God? How can we know that? Now, this is how we launched out on this series of knowing for sure that we are praying in the will of God. We just picked out a portion of the disciples' prayer that Jesus taught them, Matthew chapter 6, how to pray in the will of God. Let's read where we started from. Let's, let's put this in context. Let's quickly read Matthew chapter 6, verse number 9. Matthew chapter 6. Open your Bibles. Uh, engage with us. And let the Holy Spirit's word begin to speak in your heart. Matthew chapter 6, verse number 9. This, then, is how you should pray. Now, this is Jesus talking, and he's telling his disciples, pray like this. If Jesus says, pray like this, I think that's a good way to pray. Here is, he says, the model you should use in your prayer life. Now, we're not just going to uh, learn that when we pray, we just read this prayer and call words. But we're going to learn how to engage with God, the Holy Spirit, to allow these words to become spirit inside of us and speak life to us. So he says, this is how you pray. And I'm just going to pray, read up to the verse we want to get to today. This is how, then, you should pray. Our Father, and uh, that's critical to understand that prayer is for relationship with God. That's the first thing. Prayer is for relationship, for spiritual intimacy with God. All right? We'll see as we go through today. Prayer is not just for getting things from God or getting our needs met. Our prayers are not just give me, give me, give me. Lord, please help me, help me, help me. We'll get to petitions, but prayer is for building spiritual intimacy as God's children with the Father. Our Father in heaven, how sacred or set apart is your name. Hallowed be your name. Verse 10, your kingdom come. Remember that. Your kingdom come. Now this is where we are going. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That the will of God should be done as it is, not only in heaven, but also on earth. In my home, in my heart, wherever I am, the will of God should be done. So this is what he told his disciples in Matthew chapter 6. All right, let's look at, we read before, basic scripture. 1 John chapter 5, verse number 14. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. In other words, when you pray, you should and we should go before God with confidence. We should go before God knowing that he will hear us and he will answer us, yes, if we are praying the way he tells us. You have this confidence. You shouldn't go before God feeling like you're condemned, that God has judged you and that God is punishing you. 
But we go before God with confidence. You should be excited about going to the Father and seeing him. I remember when we were kids and going through the better times of our family relations, we could always tell when we would hear the truck coming down the road. And we would yell to our other brothers and sister, Daddy is coming, Daddy is coming. Whatever we were doing, we would stop it and run to see Daddy. We were glad Daddy had been gone all day. And Daddy is coming. We didn't say, Daddy got something for us. We didn't say, as soon as he drove up, can I have something? We were just excited to see Daddy. We loved Daddy. Daddy loved us. We would run and jump up in his arms, and he would hug and kiss us. Ask us how our day had been. We would be excited about seeing our Father. So when we approach God, we should not approach him with, with uh, terrible dread and regret, fear that he's going to punish us because we did something wrong. But this is how we approach him. We approach him, approaching God, we should approach him, that if knowing that if we ask anything according to his will, he would hear us. And if we know that he hears us, Whatever we ask, we know that we have what we've asked him. Praying in the will of God. That when we go to our Father who is in heaven and who lives in us in the person of the Holy Spirit, when we go to him, we have the assurance. You ought to know and feel like what you're praying for, God is hearing you. You're not praying in doubt. You're not praying in disbelief. We are praying knowing that the Father is listening. He's hearing us. And he's going to give us what we've asked for. On the condition that we ask according to his will. That's what we are saying. So it is pertinent that you learn to pray in the will of God. You just can't get around that. I don't care how you are trying to speak in tongues. It's what the church calls call speaking in tongues. I don't care how, you, how emotional you get, how you shout, how you enjoy the presence of God. Nothing is better than communicating with God and praying to God in his will. Glory to God. We're going to talk more about why in a hot second. Praying in the will of God. The prayer that God always answers yes. We ended last time with starting to identify some things we can pray for and know for sure we are praying in the will of God. Today I want to continue. I'm going to mention those very briefly because I don't have time or will not take time to go back over all that we said in the first sermon. I really ask that you get that message. Take some time and sort it through. You can uh, connect with some of our social media sites. Or you can call in to the church and get that message. But last time we ended are, are we started to identify some things we can pray for and know for sure we are praying in the will of God? I want you to comment in your section. I want to learn. Just type that in. I want to learn, Father God, how to pray in your will. I want to learn, Father God, how to pray in your will. I want to learn that. It's important. So we started to, to 
identify some things that would, would, that would help you start to learn that, all right? And these are specific things. I said last time, let me just give them in about three minutes. Number one, pray that God's kingdom come. Pray that God's kingdom come. That's one. Pray that God's kingdom come. I promise you, when you pray that, you are praying in the will of God. And we don't do that much now because many of our prayers about needs and petitions. We do a lot of petitionary prayer or requesting, or begging God for things. There's nothing wrong with requests and petition, petitionary prayer. God talks about that. He tells us to do that. But the important thing you need to start with, and, and I kind of skipped over that in the Lord's Prayer, the disciples' prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, because we should first magnify God in prayer and adore him and lift his name up. But then it says, may your kingdom come. If you want to be in the will of God, or you don't know how important it is to pray May your kingdom come. Now, we, again, we don't see why. Somebody might say, what? Why pray for the kingdom? I need money. I need a job. You telling me to pray for the kingdom? I don't even know what the kingdom is. I need healing. I have cancer. I have whatever. Should I not pray for those things? My marriage is broken. I'm on the verge of divorce. I'm in court battle over my children. I'm trying to deal with drugs and alcohol. I can't sleep at night. And you're telling me to pray for the kingdom. But this is what God says. He told his disciples, after we exalt him and magnify him, the next thing you pray for is may your kingdom come. We won't again go over all of that, but the kingdom of God, this is why it's important, is the presence, power, and provision of God. Write that down. The kingdom of God is the presence, the power, and the provision of God. The Bible said that Jesus, God, is the kingdom. And when you pray that the kingdom come, you are praying for God's presence, power, and provisions in your life. Because God wants to give you more than a suit of clothes. God wants to give you more than a new car. I mean, let's say it like this. Have you ever gone to try, maybe try to buy a house and you bought a house or you read about buying a house and they say all the appliances and all of the furniture comes with the house? You see, the kingdom is the house. All this other stuff, cars and appliances and all those things, those things come with the kingdom. That's why Jesus said, glory to God, seek the kingdom first. Once you get the kingdom, all these other things will be added unto you. We worry about things before we worry about the kingdom. I need to be concerned about getting the power and the presence and the provisions of God in my heart. I need to, need to concern myself with getting the authority and the ring and the rule of God in my heart. Once God takes over everything, he'll give you all your needs. So we pray that God's kingdom come. Number two, we said, pray the word. Pray the word. You don't have to uh, read, God. Uh, let's see, we didn't read it, but we could Go back if we take the time and read it. He says, don't be like the hypocrites. Matthew chapter 6, verse number 5. Don't be like the hypocrites. 
They love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they'll have their reward. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your father who is unseen. Then, Matthew chapter 6, verse 6, then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. But this is where I was trying to go. And when you pray, don't keep on babbling like the pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Now, I'm not against long prayers if they are prayed in God's will and if they are God-focused. But uh, much of uh, many prayers that I've heard, and I'm sure I've done it myself, we are praying to people and about people when we are praying. That's not the purpose of prayer. The prayer is not to lift you up or to criticize people when you are praying. Prayer is to be prayed privately and quietly when you're shut off to God. Okay? So, pray the word. Pray what God's word says. Pray, pray, pray the prayer Jesus taught his disciples to pray in Matthew chapter 6. You need to teach your children. Go over this prayer with them. Teach them about this prayer. We were coming up as children. Times have changed so now. Going to Sunday school, there were certain things in the Bible we had to memorize. And we had to be able to recite them before we got the little prize or reward that they were going to give us. 23rd Psalms, the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5 and so forth. The, the, the disciples' prayer, we call it at that time the Lord's Prayer, here in Matthew chapter 6. The Ten Commandments. We have to memorize those things and be able to explain them. We have to know other Bible scriptures. So the reason I'm bringing all that up, we must teach our children how to pray. The late on, uh, through virtual experience, uh, when we come back together as a body of Christ, you know, I'm redefining my calling and work in this season of life in terms of, of remaking and, and uh, myself according to God's call. But one of the things I'm interested in is teaching to children and young adults and coaching them in prayer and spiritual warfare. But we must teach our children how to pray. Pray the word. Tie, connect all your prayers and the requests to the scriptures. Request from God what he say he would give you in the scriptures. Request from God what he says he'll give you in the scriptures. Tie your prayers to the scriptures. Whatever you're asking God for, tie them to the scriptures. This is why John, John 15, 7 is so important. Abide in me and let my word abide in you. When you are praying, you're praying the word. It may not be the exact word, and many, and many times it will be. But it may not be exactly, but you pray based on the core values of God's word. You pray the word. God promises Glory to God, to honor his word. The Bible say God honors his word above his name because his word is who he is. God is faithful to his word. Remind him of his word. This is what Hezekiah did. Hezekiah was scheduled to die, but Hezekiah reminded God of his word. Israel was in a terrible fight, Jehoshaphat, against five other nations, powerful nations. Jeremiah got the people together, got into a prayer, called them to assembly, and Jeremiah, I'm sorry, uh, Jehoshaphat 
started reminding God of what he said. He said, God, you made a covenant with us. This is what you say we would do. Lord, you promised us if we would ever be under attack by the enemy, if we look toward Jerusalem and call on your name, you promised that you would come and defend us. I'm here today. Yes, you in something. It's time for you to remind God about his word. Not that he forgets anything, but God want to know whether you forgot. Because God wants you to know that the promises of God never fail. Pray the word. Then last of all, we told you last time, boy, I'm going to have to move a little quicker here. Pray for surrender. Pray for surrender. In other words, pray, Father, not my will, but your will be done. Pray that prayer. Not my will, Father. Don't be like Jacob in the Bible in Genesis chapter 32. Stop wrestling with God. Trying to force God to bless you. I'm not going to let you go, God, until you bless me. Stop wrestling with God. Tugging with God. Surrender. His answers and his yes comes through surrender when we say, Father, not my will, but yours be done. Now, let's, let's, let's pick up real quickly here uh, to several others today. Uh, there were some we did last week, uh, but I'm not going to go over them. I'm going to continue. Uh, uh, well, uh, let's just pick up here and go into some other things that are really important if you're going to pray in God's will. And we're going to not try to move too fast, but yet we're going to try to be timely. Is that all right? Somebody say, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Just lift up your hands right now, wherever you are. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Father, may your kingdom come. We come in agreement with you, Holy Spirit, that your kingdom is coming. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. May your will be done in my heart as it is in heaven. In the name of Jesus now, bless those hands that are lifted up. We surrender in Jesus' name. Praying in the will of God, the prayer that God always answers. Number one today, continuing on from last time, but these are additional ones. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Write that down. Pray in the Holy Spirit. If you're going to pray in the will of God, you're going to have to do this. You're going to have to say, uh, Lord, bring me an agreement with your Holy Spirit. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Now, let me say right off, this does not mean speaking in tongues. Let's read, pray in the Holy Spirit. Let's read Romans. Now, uh, you need to probably put these verses down too. Pray in the Holy Spirit, Ephesians 6.18. Ephesians 6.18. It tells us to pray in the Holy Spirit. And Jude 1, 20 and 21. Jude 1. Jude is right before the book of Revelation. The last book of the Bible. It has only one chapter. Jude 1, 20 and 21. Jude was the brother of Jesus. Half brother of Jesus. Jude 1, 20 and 21. All right now. But I want to read for us Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Romans 8. Uh, we read this, I believe, last time. I'm not sure. Romans 8, verse number 26. Bear with us now as we work through this. It's important to get it, and I ask God to help me not get so emotional, but really try to teach you through this for a minute. Romans 8, verse number 26. 
I'm reading out of the NIV. In the same way, it's talking about what's went on before, but I won't go through all of that. The Spirit, Romans 8, 26, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. Now listen to what Paul said through the Holy Spirit. And God told him to say this. Paul believed it. We, that's you and I, believers, because this is to Christian believers. We do not know what we ought to pray for. Isn't that something? We don't know what we ought to pray for. We do not know what to pray for. Boy, if you told a, 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 a long church-going saint that, they would take it as an insult. But Paul wrote Romans, he was moving toward the end of his life. Because his last stop would be in Rome. We do not know what to pray for. We are too weak. We are saved, but we are still tainted by the flesh. We don't know. Our focus is always on our needs, our wants, our problems, our situations, our suffering, and our pain. We don't know what to pray for. We only come to God in times of crisis. Paul says we don't know what to pray for. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us. That part of the ministry of the Holy Spirit is to go between us and God. Because we don't know what to pray for. We don't know how to pray. Prayer is a learning process. Prayer is a, <coughs> excuse me, a growing process. We don't know what to pray for, but the Spirit helps us, intercedes for us with groans and words that cannot be expressed. We're going to, have to take another time and work on that. Listen, and he, the Holy Spirit, who searches our hearts, I'm sorry, God, and he, that is God, who searches our hearts, knows the mind of the Spirit. Because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with, to God's will. Why? Because the Spirit knows our weaknesses. The Spirit knows, that's what it says in verse 26, he helps us in our weaknesses. He knows how to stand between you and God. And when judgment, when you are uh, 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 when I'm due judgment because of Jesus, the Spirit says, hold up, goes to God and say, Father, he died. Jesus died for Joe. Father, give him your mercy. He has trouble with drugs. He has trouble with addictions. He has trouble with his temper. But oh God, Jesus died, shed his blood, and I want to stand between him and you. The Bible say Jesus is our intercessor 
In Romans chapter 8, we'll see that another time. But not only does Jesus intercede, again, and stand in the gap, stand between us and God, but the Holy Spirit also intercedes. Glory to God. Thank God that the Spirit intercedes. Yes, the Holy Spirit knows the mind of God. And he knows our weaknesses. I wish you would just say amen and write down, I got Jesus praying for me. Somebody don't say amen. I, I got the Holy Ghost praying for me. I got God watching over me. And if you have God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, you cannot lose. We're not going to deal with it today, but we know that if God be for us, who can be against us? The Father is protecting us. Jesus is praying for us. And the Holy Ghost is praying for us. Oh, what a blessing. Yes, when I pray in the Spirit, I'm releasing the powers of heaven, the power of the Trinity, is being released. We got help on every hand. So when we pray, we pray our Father who's in heaven, but who also dwells in us in the person of the Holy Spirit. We pray, Father God, we come in agreement with your Holy Spirit that everything will be all right. Father, we come in agreement with your Holy Spirit. And if we are not in an agreement with what your Spirit is praying, Father, I surrender. And I say, not my will, but your will be done. Praying in the will of God. Yes, we pray in the Holy Spirit. Praying in the Spirit also means listening to the Spirit. Listening to the Spirit. Do you not know that good communication builds intimacy? That's why many marriages are broken. Many friendships have fallen away. People that I used to be close to. Those relationships have broken. There are many reasons for that. But one reason is that people have not learned how to communicate in conflict. When Satan attack relationships, they don't know how to pray through those things, praying in the will of God. They don't know how, glory to God, to build intimacy in their marriage. Because people think intimacy is just about sexual relationships. They don't know that the greatest intimacy in the world is communication intimacy. Yes, you can have intimacy through your words, but we must learn how to listen to the Holy Spirit. If we listen while we pray, we can hear the Holy Spirit talking to us. If we use our spiritual ears, we can hear what the Spirit is saying. we can be sure we are praying the will of God. This is why the Bible says, whoever hath ears or an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. 
One reason people, uh, churches, some, do not know what to do is they are not listening to God, the Holy Spirit. The Bible says the Holy Spirit will talk to the church. It's the Holy Spirit's job to watch over the church. I would dare not reassemble without hearing a word from the Lord. Just a little talk with Jesus. As the songwriter say, will make everything all right. If we listen, he'll guide us. Praying in the will of God is the prayer that God always answers. Because God will tell us what he likes. Tell us what he wants. And tell us the way to go. As we pray in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit makes our prayers acceptable to God because we don't know what to pray for. Our prayers are often from the flesh. Our prayers are based on worldly pleasures. So the Holy Spirit has to take our prayers and send them up as sweet incense and a sweet fragrance to God. Our prayers must go through the fires of God's Holy Spirit to burn off the lust of the flesh and to burn worldliness out of those prayers. Do you read in the Bible where God say, pray always, pray continuously, People think that that has a lot to do with quantity or how long or how much time. But praying always has more to do with aligning your prayer with the will of God. Oh, you got to stay on your knees. I got to stay on my knees long enough to make sure that I've allowed the Holy Spirit to align my prayer with the will of God. So I got to pray continuously. So God and the fires of the Holy Spirit can burn lust of the flesh and burn worldliness out of my prayers. Glory to God for the prayer of a righteous man, James chapter 5, is powerful and effective. Praying in the will of God is praying in the Holy Spirit. No, if I were you, I wouldn't be worried about tongues. I would just be worried about intimates with God. I'm not, not against tongues. I believe that Christians have the gift of tongues. Not all of them, maybe, but I believe tongues are a gift from God. And I believe that they are not only languages, but they are heavenly tongues. Oh, there is a tongue that we can talk in that the devil don't understand. There is a tongue that we can talk in that the devil can't decode. There is a tongue we can talk in that the devil can't hack. It's just between us and God. Glory to God. Learn to pray in the Holy Spirit. Let me just introduce the second one for today. And we'll be done. I just want to go through this slowly and not try to rush through. So I'm only taking one or two of the more complex one each time we go through this series. But number two, not only do you 
pray in the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. But you pray to accept God's way to bless you. I said we pray to accept God's way to bless us. Write that down. Pray to accept God's way to bless us. Pray, Father, not my will, not my way, but your way. Many of us pray thinking we are going to McDonald's, thinking that we can have it our way but not with our God. God is a man, is, a, uh, is a, the person that says, not my way, not your way, but my way. God says your ways are not my ways. How I do things are different than how you do things. We should pray rather than have it my way. God, have it your way. Sometimes we have to wrestle through that. Not with God, but we are wrestling with our own will. And you have to wrestle until God break your will. Because until God break your will, you'll never surrender. And a broken Christian is a blessed Christian. Glory to God. That sounds mighty good to me. I said a broken Christian is a blessed Christian. God says I love a person with a contrite, a sorrowful spirit, a broken spirit. I love people whose hearts are like clay. And this is why we should tell God, have thine own way. Why don't you say that now? Right where you are. Boy, I didn't mean to have you writing so much today. But it's good if you would write down, Father, have your own way. You are the potter and I am the clay. Oh, mold me and shape me after thine own will. You are the potter and I am the clay. If you need to break me and start all over, go ahead, potter, have your way. Maybe you need to permit a thorn in the flesh Go ahead, potter, and plant your thorn. God can bless us, but he's going to do it his way. Oh, I wish you'd hear me tonight. And let me just give you, there are two ways in which God bless us. And we'll stop here after I give you these and pick up next time. Two ways in which God bless us. Number one, he can bless us by miracles. Number two, he can bless us by divine providence. And we're going to have to explain these more in detail next time. But what I'm trying to get over to you, miracles mean. God can instantly give us what we pray for if it's in his will. But this is how most people want God to answer their prayers. Yes, it's popular now to pray and preach about miracles. God, they say, have a miracle for you. God, your miracle is going to be at home when you get there. Turn around 
three times, you're going to have your miracle. And I'm here to tell you, I don't doubt that God can do miracles. God is able to do anything. All things are possible, but all things are not permissive. Let me say it again. With God, all things are possible. But all things are not permissive. In other words, I can do anything. But there are some things I'm not going to do because I'm a sovereign God. And I'm going to work in your life a different way. I may work in James' life with an instant miracle. But there's other stuff going on in your life. I'm going to have to work by providence. Yes, providence, providence. God can either work by miracle or he can work by providence. Providence is when God uses natural causes and secondary causes to answer our prayers. In other words, if you ask me for healing, I'm not going to instantly heal you, but I'm going to provide you with some good doctors and good nurses to bring you and restore you to health. That's called providence. I promise you that I would feed you and that I'm your shepherd and you shall not want, but it's not going to be like Israel was in the wilderness where manna just fall from heaven. Yet and still in providence, I'm going to have the farmers to raise the food. I'm going to have distributors to distribute the food. I'm going to have grocery stores to sell the food. And I'm going to give you money to go buy the food. And I want you to know, either way it go, I'm still God. I'm God in miracles, but I'm also God in providence. And I just want you to tell me to let me have my way. For my ways are not your ways. If I gave you a miracle, you would think I'm a magician. If I gave some folk a miracle, they would be tempting me always to jump off the top of the temple and run. God would catch them. They would always be tempting me to do a miracle. If I always gave you miracles, they would become dependent on miracles. If I always gave you miracles, they would become spoiled children, nothing but brats, thinking that they could have what they want any time I asked them for it. But I got to train them that I am not just a God of miracles, but I'm a God of providence. And the same God that walks with me with miracles or the same, is the same God that walks in providence. God blesses more of us by blessing us through providence because God is trying to teach us when you go through providence, when you have to work for things, when you have to go through situations where there are other people involved. Don't you know providence takes time and by time and providence, you learn to trust me. But unless you go through some things through providence, you'll never trust me. Yes, God's way is the best way. God is sending some of us through providence. He's blessing us, not by miracles, but by providence. And you ought to tell God, thank you. Glory to God, because in providence, you have to learn to wait on God. You may want a baby, but glory to God, 
God brought Jesus in the world. And he brought Jesus by a miracle, glory to God. But Mary still had to go through providence. She had to wait nine months to have the baby. Mary was still human. She had the birth pains of bringing Jesus in the world. Glory to God. Mary was a special woman, but yet God didn't do everything by miracles in her life. Glory to God. Jesus was God's own son. He had the power to raise the dead. Glory to God. He had the power to let the lame walk. He had the power to make the blind see. He had the power to walk on waters. Yes, glory to God. But in spite of all his power, God allowed him to go through providence, through human situations. He had to come down through 42 generations. Yes, he had to be under Roman oppression. Glory to God. Jesus was not instantly delivered from Roman oppression. Yes, they decided they would crucify him. God's providence. Yes, because God is going to deliver his people and he's going to deliver Jesus, not by miracle, but by providence. Yes, through the events of life, through the events of history, through day-to-day -day activities, God stepping in here, God stepping in there, God using him, God using her. That's what you call divine providence. It's the daily activities of life where God works in those activities. For it's God that work in us both to will and to do. Yes, we got to agree with God. I don't know about you, but I say today, have your way. However you want to bless me is all right with me. Jesus said, not my will, but thy will be done. I don't want to go and drink the cup, but Father, if it's your will, if you want me to take this route, I'll take this route. Father, if you want me to walk rather than drive, I'll take this route. If you want me, Father, to walk, Rather than take an airplane, I'll take this route. That's what you call providence. And this is why, glory to God, God told Israel, Yes, I am God, and there's none besides me. Have thou not heard that the everlasting God, Oh, he fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Yes, he giveth power to the faint. And to those that have no might, he increases strength. Glory to God. Can I, can I get you to understand this? But I have to deliver you by providence. 70 years, you got to stay in captivity. And then I'm going to deliver you. But if you just live by faith, for they that wait, glory to God, shall renew their strength. If you just operate in providence, uh, sometimes you have to fly. Yes, for you have to mount up with wings as eagles. Sometimes you have to run. You shall run and not be weary. But sometimes you have to walk. And I don't want you to faint in your walking years. Yes, glory to God. I remember when I was flying high. I was mounting up with wings as eagles. Yes, those were my flying years. But now I had to, don't you know, I had to run. I had some running years when God wanted me to run. Glory to God. But now I'm moving to my walking years and I have to walk by faith. Some of you are in your walking years. You're older now. Some of you are young and you are in your walking season. But I'm here to tell you it's divine providence. God was with us when we were young. And God will be with us when we were old, when we get old. I heard, glory to God, I heard, I heard David say, Though I've been young and now I'm old, 
I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their seed begging bread. Don't worry, you're going to have flying years. You're going to have running years. You're going to have walking years. But it's God's way. Just walk in his path. Just follow the Lord and everything will be all right. Yes! Everything will be all right. Glory to God. Yes, don't give up right now. He'll take care of you all the way. His way is the best way. Pray in the will of God that you can walk. Glory to God. You can walk in the pathway of God. God's way is best. Don't let the devil make you think. It's like McDonald's, have it your way. Tell God, Father, have it your way. Right now, you can comment on your section. Father, have it your way. Your way is best. Your way is not my way. I don't see it. And we're going to pick up with this uh, next time. But your way is not my way. I don't know why and how you let my loved one get COVID. I don't know why and how you let my mother die. God, death is not from you. But Lord, your way is the best way. I don't understand evil and all these things in your world. You created this world and you permitted evil to come into your world. I don't understand all of that, but I know your way is the best way. Somebody ought to say that. I know your way is the best way. I don't know why. I don't have all the answers, but I know your way is the best way. I don't know why Sue and Bill got a kidney, but I can't get one. But I know your way is the best way. Now when I get up and go to dialysis, I tell my wife, thank you. I'm going to my blessing place. I don't see it all yet, but I, I've learned now. It was hard the first time, first year. But now I say, Father, not my will, but your will be done. In spite of what I have to deal with, I call my suffering place my blessing place. Have it your way. Won't always be this way. Trouble won't last always. Right now, I've learned to stop focusing. Thank God for that. He's delivered me. So now when I pray, my prayers are not always about my pain and suffering and what I'm going through or what others are going through. We'll talk about prayers of intercession at another time through this series. Even when I pray for people, it's not always prayers of deliverance. I pray a lot now that people will come know, to know the will of God and to know what God wants for their life. Pray that people will not just take jobs, not just do various things, but they'll know what God wants in their life. Glory to God. Glory to God. We thank you. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Pray in the Holy Spirit and pray to accept God's way that he wants to bless you. That he want to bless you. God's way is best. You'll see more of this as we go through this. I would make it my priority and I'm encouraging you to pray in the will of God to let the Holy Spirit align what you are praying for with the will of God. Are you praying for what God wants you to pray? Are you praying for what God wants you to have? Glory to God. Right now, wherever you are,
contact us on social media through one of the uh, sites, our church website, YouTube, Facebook. Write us by mail, call us by phone. Let us know if the word has helped you. Let us know if you are going through a time where you need prayer. Let us also know, I would like to, is this a good season for you? Let us know that. Glory to God. Share some positive things with us. Don't make up anything now. I'm just saying this. Something that has happened remarkably in your life and you know it was God. And you know God intervened in providence to bless you. We want to hear those testimonies. I would like to get some of you with us when we are preaching on Sunday to give a testimony. You know, to share with us how God has been moving you through providence. If you've been listening to me and listening to Pastor Gabriel in this message, I pray that... Uh, you would get ready and call others and come back next time. But right now, wherever you are, we're going to ask, if you're not a Christian, that you would let us know that you felt the power and the special touch of God today and that you would like to be a Christian because Jesus Christ died on the cross and shed his blood for you and for me. And we love him and we believe that even though we've not seen Jesus face to face, we believe that he exists and we believe that he's a reward of those that diligently seek him. Right now, let us know, okay? And we thank you for joining us this Sunday. Come back again next week. Pastor Gabriel is teaching uh, Wednesday night, I believe. I'm not sure of the schedule. I need to do better to keep up with it. But don't worry about which one of us is preaching. Just come. Join us on Sunday morning over, over your uh, online uh, devices and worship with us. We thank God for Sister Roslyn and her worship as well. Continue to pray for her and pray that God would bless this ministry in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We come in agreement with the Holy Spirit. Straighten up our prayers. Burn out the flesh and the lust and the worldliness in Jesus' name. We honor you today. We love you, Father. Help us to see it your way and to do it your way, to follow your path. Your way is best. We pray today for surrender, and we say today, not our will, but yours be done. In Jesus' name, amen.